Welcome to Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is BLS Medication Administration, Aspirin and Nitroglycerin. After watching this video, viewers should understand the criteria for administration of nitroglycerin and aspirin, recognize the indications for administration of nitroglycerin and aspirin, understand the basic mechanisms of action for nitroglycerin and aspirin, recognize the cautions for administration of nitroglycerin and aspirin, understand how to administer sublingual nitroglycerin tablets, and understand how to administer oral or PO aspirin tablets. The criteria for chest pain or threatened myocardial infarction patients is those patients with non-traumatic chest pain or other indications of possible MI, such as shortness of breath, nausea, diaphoresis, etc. All patients should receive routine medical care, and in patients where their systolic blood pressure is greater than 120 millimeters of mercury and their heart rate is between 50 and 130 beats per minute, BLS providers may assist patient with taking their own nitroglycerin tablets. As long as their systolic BP remains above 120, one tablet may be taken every three to five minutes up to a total of three doses. In addition, BLS providers may administer aspirin to a total of 324 milligrams if it's not already taken or contraindicated by allergy or active bleeding. Signs and symptoms of myocardial infarction include discomfort in the chest, which may manifest as pain, pressure, squeezing, or heaviness, pain that radiates to the jaw, back, or arm, diaphoresis or sweating, or pale or gray skin, trouble breathing, shortness of breath, or fluid in the lungs, nausea or vomiting, hypotension, or bradycardia. The following animation briefly discusses the physiology of a myocardial infarction. Because the heart must continually beat, the coronary arteries serve a critical role, supplying the constantly active heart muscle with oxygenated blood. As we zoom in to observe the interior of this diseased coronary artery, notice the partially restricted blood flow due to the atherosclerotic plaque in the arterial wall. If part of this plaque ruptures, a thrombus forms and may grow and occlude the vessel. The thrombus detaches, causing an embolism, obstructing the blood flow through the artery. Since the supply of blood has been obstructed from reaching the region of the heart supplied by this artery, the myocardial cells become ischemic, resulting in damage to the heart muscle. Nitroglycerin works to relieve chest discomfort in patients that are potentially having an MI because it forms free radical nitric oxide and what that does is it causes vasodilation and that ultimately causes smooth muscle relaxation and dilates coronary vessels allowing for blood flow to move easier through those coronary vessels that have potential ischemia. It also decreases myocardial oxygen demand so overall reducing stress to the heart. So some of the side effects of nitroglycerin are because of that potent vasodilation that occurs. So because of that potent vasodilation, it can de decrease the blood pressure and decrease, decrease the heart rate. So in a patient that has a systolic blood pressure of less than 90 or a heart rate of less than 50 or greater than 130, you would not want to use nitroglycerin. Some other patient populations where it could be contraindicated are those patients that have erectile dysfunction medications. And if they've taken these medications within the past 72 hours, you would want to withhold nitroglycerin from those patients. This is because those drugs also cause vasodilation and in addition to the nitroglycerin can cause significant decreases in blood pressure. For patients experiencing chest pain with a systolic blood pressure above 120 millimeters of mercury and a heart rate between 50 and 130 beats per minute, BLS providers may assist the patient with taking their own nitroglycerin tablets. Obviously, this means the patient must have been prescribed nitro. This dose can be repeated every three to five minutes to a total of three, including those taken by the patient provided that the patient's heart rate and blood pressure remain within the set limits. Blood pressure and heart rate should be rechecked after each nitroglycerin as the administration of the nitroglycerin can affect those vital signs. To assist the patients, you simply help them to place one 0.4 milligram tablet under their tongue and allow it to dissolve. Whenever nitroglycerin has been given, transport should be initiated with ALS aboard or ALS should be intercepted en route to the hospital. In review, nitroglycerin relaxes smooth muscle and causes vasodilation. This decreases the strain on the heart muscle and decreases the myocardial oxygen demand. 
The patient's vitals must remain within the set limits, systolic blood pressure greater than 120, and heart rate between 50 and 130 in order to assist with nitroglycerin administration. Nitroglycerin may cause hypotension due to vasodilation. It should not be given to patients who have used erectile dysfunction medications within 72 hours. And for BLS providers, a maximum of three nitroglycerin should be given, including those taken by the patient prior to the arrival of EMS. In patients that are having an MI, aspirin works by inhibiting platelet aggregation. And what this means is it basically decreases the platelet aggregation and allows blood to flow more freely through potential areas of ischemia in the heart. This is really important because you're able to get oxygenated blood into areas that could potentially, or cells that could potentially die. It's really important to give aspirin right up front because this is something that works pretty immediately and has been shown to improve long-term outcomes in patients with MIs. There are some populations that you wouldn't necessarily want to give aspirin in. Patients that have a true anaphylactic allergy, you would want to withhold aspirin, or patients that do have an active bleed because the um, inhibiting platelet aggregation could also exacerbate their bleed. Other patients, though, that might have a sensitivity to aspirin, so they might have a GI upset or it might cause um, some reflux for them. Even patients that have an itching allergy or something like that, you would still want to give aspirin because the benefit of aspirin up front outweighs the risks in those patient populations. The same is true for patients that are on anticoagulants such as warfarin. Even though their doctors may have instructed them not to take aspirin regularly, this is a, a disease state or an acute MI that you would actually want to give the patient aspirin because this is another scenario where the benefit of early aspirin is going to outweigh the risk to the patient. In addition to nitroglycerin, patients having chest pain or with threatened myocardial infarction will also benefit from the administration of aspirin. For patients with chest discomfort, aspirin should be considered every time. The goal is to get the patient a total of 324 milligrams, which is generally accomplished by giving four 81 milligram chewable tablets. It is appropriate to consider what the patient has already taken. If the patient has already taken 324 milligrams of aspirin prior to arrival, then it is not necessary to give any additional dose. However, if the patient has only taken one 81 milligram chewable aspirin prior to arrival, it would be appropriate to give the additional three chewable aspirin tablets so that the patient receives a total dose of 324 milligrams. Additionally, many patients take enteric coated aspirin. The enteric coated aspirin has a special coating on it that does not allow it to dissolve in the stomach, but rather it dissolves once it enters the intestine. The theory behind this is that it helps to reduce GI upset for patients that take aspirin on a regular basis. The problem in an acute setting is that it significantly delays the amount of time that it takes for the patient to realize the benefit of the aspirin since it takes much longer for the aspirin to get into the patient's bloodstream. Therefore, if the patient has taken enteric coated aspirin recently, such as at the direction of the 911 dispatcher, that dose of aspirin should really not be considered as being immediately effective, and the patient should be given the normal dose of chewable aspirin tablets. Ultimately, if there's any doubt that the patient has gotten the total 324 milligrams, it's best to just give them the entire dose of aspirin. In review, aspirin prevents platelet activation and reduces further clotting in coronary arteries. Aspirin works almost immediately and is very effective. It should only be withheld for active bleeding or true allergy. It should still be given even if the patient normally experiences some GI upset or minor sensitivity to aspirin, and it also should be given even if the patient has been advised to avoid aspirin due to regular use of other anticoagulants. Watch now as our BLS crew simulates the assessment and treatment of a patient with non-traumatic chest pain. Oh. Hey, we're here oh. with the ambulance. Can you tell me what's going on? It's having some chest pain. Okay, when did that start? Oh, just a short while ago. Okay, have you ever experienced anything like this before? Yeah. So you turn your chair okay, when was that? About six months ago. Okay, and what happened then? My doctor gave me some pills that I'm supposed to take. Okay, can I take um, a look at those pills? Yes. Okay, looks like you're prescribed nitroglycerin. This okay. is uh, prescribed to you. It is not expired. So after he takes your blood pressure, we may uh, help you or assist you with one of these tablets. In the meantime, I'd like you to take some aspirin. Are you allergic to any medication before I give this to you? No. Do you have any medical problems at all to speak of? No. Okay. Aside from that cardiac event, right? 
I'm going to give you four of these 81 milligram tablets, so it's 324 milligrams altogether. Okay. These are chewable. I'm going to put them in your hand. I want you to take all four of those if you can and chew those right up. Okay. When you get done chewing, let me know. Blood pressure is 132 on 70. Okay, your blood pressure is good. This nitro is prescribed to you. It is not expired, so I'm going to go ahead and assist you with taking one of these. Have you ever taken nitro before? Yeah. Okay, and you remember that you want to put it under your tongue. You want to let it dissolve. You don't want to chew it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to go ahead and put this in your hand. Go ahead and put that right under your tongue. Your heart rate's 84. Okay, great. Um, why don't we prepare to start packaging her up? Is ALS on the way? It is. They're 15 minutes away. Okay. I'm going to give you another nitro in about three to five minutes as long as your blood pressure stays good. And we'll okay. do that as long as you uh, continue to have chest pain. Okay. Okay. In review, the Melrems protocol for chest pain or threatened myocardial infarction is for use in patients with non-traumatic chest pain or other indications of possible MI, including shortness of breath, nausea, diaphoresis, etc. These patients should receive routine medical care and if their systolic blood pressure is above 120 milligrams of mercury and their heart rate is between 50 and 130 beats per minute, BLS providers may assist the patient with taking their own prescribed nitroglycerin tablets every three to five minutes up to a total of three doses. With the caution that nitroglycerin should be avoided in patients who have taken erectile dysfunction medication such as Viagra, Levitra, or Cialis in the past 72 hours. Additionally, BLS providers should administer 324 milligrams of aspirin if it has not already been taken or is not contraindicated. In summary, after watching this video, you should now understand the criteria for administration of nitroglycerin and aspirin. You should recognize the indications for administration of nitroglycerin and aspirin. You should understand the basic mechanisms of action for nitroglycerin and aspirin. And you should recognize the cautions for administration of nitroglycerin and aspirin. Also, you should understand how to administer sublingual nitroglycerin tablets, and you should understand how to administer oral or PO aspirin tablets.